flight test crew here. Today we're going to take a look at a bird that comes almost fully assembled right out of the box. It's the iFly 4 from IdeaFly, sent to us by Hobby King. All it should take to get this bird in the air is a receiver and a battery. Let's see if it's really that easy. Okay, so here we are, the idea fly. Let's take a peek. So what do we have here? We have a... Ooh, look at that. There we go. Well, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> That part comes off. Oh, I see. Those are just little pop releases. There we go. I haven't read the manual yet, so I'm just looking at this, just playing with this, and it looks pretty straightforward. Just loosening those little bolts here, and the limbs move so you can store it or secure it for flight. Just getting these in kind of flight configuration for looking at it. Now, first thoughts are that this is, looks like it's pretty well made. It feels solid enough. It appears to be some kind of plastic. We've got the ESCs below here, and the flight controller on top. Looks like you strapped the battery under the little housing here. Here we have the undercarriage and landing skids. Now, they attach pretty simply, just clip into place. Now, these are a little harder to thread, so I'm going to do that before I attach them. A little bit of effort there to push it through. Here we go. They pretty much just clip in, so little clip goes here. Of course, a little bit of bending in the middle to let them clip on. And there we go. Simple as that. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to hook up the receiver. We have a little orange receiver here that will bind to one of our radios. But now there are a lot of extra wires we don't need. There are four wires here, S1 and 2 and P1 and 2, which we're not going to use since we don't have a gimbal. So let's start by yanking those out because they're not required, just to save the confusion. So now I get the hook in the receiver. Now everything's labeled on top here and on the receiver, so it's really easy to kind of figure out where things go. Also in the manual is a quite detailed diagram. Aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. And we're going to use the gear as our mode switch. Okay, there we are. Now we just gotta stick it in there and secure the wires. So here I am looping the cables back to tuck them inside the craft. Got a small pick here I'm just gonna use to snag them. The cable's a little tidier that way by tucking them on the inside below the battery versus having them all up front there. Keep the receiver in the front like so, just secure it down with zip ties. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Well that is cool. Only, only a few minutes between out of the box to fully assembled. Now onto the computer. So in the bottom of the box we found this little DVD here. Now it doesn't have a printed manual so you assume everything's on this little disc that you need. Okay, so here's the iFly DVD, and here we have the configuration tools, copy of .NET, in case you don't have that, a couple pictures, firmware, oh, manual, so I click on the user manual, that pops up the manual, very nice, Just scroll through that, and also on the disc was this little MP4 file, which is a small movie, kind of about uh, how to configure it quite nice. Skip ahead in there. So the nice thing is your manual is both written and video on the disk. So now we're going to use the computer with the iFly software to configure the transmitter. So we have a DX6i here. Now one thing that did not come in the box, so we just didn't get one as far as I know, was a USB A to mini B cable. So you can get these pretty much in any store or some cell phones have them. That's all you need. Just plugs in the side. There. 
Now, the nice thing about this is the computer will power up the entire system without the battery attached. So there's no fear of these starting. They can't start off the computer's power. So you can configure your transmitter and play with your settings without worry about taking off on you. Now let's take a look at the iFly software and configure our radio. Okay, let's go into the iFly tools. Let's double click on the executable. And there we have it, there's the software. Now, if you don't speak Chinese, I poked around and found the English button here. It makes things a little easier for us. I don't speak Chinese. So, first thing we have is representation of the copter itself. So, just make sure everything's working. It's working just fine. You can set level at this point. Also test motors if you get a battery attached, but detach the props first. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to joystick. Now here is where we can take our controller and check all the settings. Now, we have to calibrate. You just run the sticks in circles and the switch. Okay, we are calibrated now. Now, two of these are backwards on my stick here, so you want to hit the reverse on these two to correct that. Okay, now we're ready for field testing. Alright, we're getting ready to go flying, but before we do, I just wanted to take a quick minute to point out that the iFly 4 comes with an XT60 connector, which if you got a battery like this one from Hobby King, then you're ready to go right out of the box. You don't even need to solder anything up. So for our first flight, we're just going to toss it in the air and see what happens. No adjustments have been made at all to the flight control system. My first thoughts are this is uh, it's surprisingly smooth actually. This is great. It's quiet. It, you know, it, it practically flies itself. It's it's pretty amazing actually. Pretty nimble. It might need a little bit of adjustment. Controls are again are a bit spongy, but I think I can be tightened up with the PIDs and the computer. But it's not necessary to fly though. Out of the box, amazing. Just just good stuff. I can easily see this being a first person squad. All right. We've got the battery disconnected because we want to go over a few of the commands you can give it using the throttle stick. First of all, if you pull down and to the left, that starts the motors. Down and to the right stops the motors. And then if you notice your aircraft is consistently drifting in one direction or the other, regardless of the wind, you may need to calibrate it. In order to do that, we remove the housing, slide the battery out of the way, then we've got these little bubble levels left over from our multi-Wii days. Put that on top of the flight control system, make sure it's level, and then push the stick up and to the right. Easy. Another feature when I point out with this craft, it's got some lights at the bottom. It's got blue forward and red aft. Not only used for orientation, but you can tell what mode you're in. So if you're in stability mode, you get two flashes, acro mode one flash. All right. For our final test, we want to see what the payload capacity of the iFly 4 is. We've got these two ounce fishing sinkers tied off on a line. And we're just going to power up the ship and see how many of them she can lift. That should give us the idea for total lifting capacity. Wow. Well, to tell you the truth, we were caught off guard a little bit by that last test. That was all the weight we brought with us, a full pound, over 400 grams of lead, and this thing lifted into the air at only about half throttle. Well, and the best part is, it's available, really inexpensive, from Hobby King. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time. All right. Fly safe. <laughs>